Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Incoherent Ram... I don't know why I'm doing that. We're not doing robots. That doesn't even sound like a cyborg. <laughs> it's like a cyborg would have a robot. I am the yeah. dominant... Uh, <laughs> that's that's when welcome you're... to another episode of Incoherent <laughs> Ramblings. That was just when you had your you know voice box replaced from technology from the 50s. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody, this is Joey Shamble. With me is... Kale Anderson. Daryl George. And from far and away, we have... Tom Cruise. Paul Hottinger from the home of Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that in the pre-ramble. Uh, Paul's a little sick today, so he stayed home. We're doing it. We're hearing him over uh, Hangout, over the Thank airwaves of internet. So, uh, today we will be doing Kale's Choice, which is Cyborg. Oh, uh, give into our metal overlords. Yeah, yeah. that'll be great. Because they rock, dude. Oh. Today's uh, sponsor is Robocop. Not the new one, do, 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 the old do, do, one. Do. Who we actually have a figure of. I'm holding in my hands. He is really Robocop, not somebody else. I am Iron Damn it! Oh. <laughs> uh, he's Robocop, but he's got a personality of Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> the cyborg. And uh, yeah, so that's today's episode. Remember, you can reach us uh, on email show at iamrambly.com. And remember to leave us some comments anytime, any day, good or bad. We don't care if you're hearing this. Just put a comment somewhere so we and know you're out there. And if you're there, you can give us some random ramblings that we might use on our next episode of Random Ramblings. Yep, just go to the Random Rambling page. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Jesus. All right, so oh, today's pre ramble, instead of doing our individual topic something uh some big news hit today which may or may not be true but it's kind of exciting uh we're filming this not filming what are we doing <laughs> recording this recording. from arcadia california as we do every week and uh we're right next to a place called temple city california where uh, three of us actually grew up and bitcoin as we've talked about in the past well why don't you fill us in kale and paul because you're the ones who uh have read the article and know more about it. so go what's that noise paul all right go no, I don't know. All right, never mind. So, uh, news broke today. You know, I had the article up, <laughs> and I went to our Trello. <laughs> well, anyways. Well, the thing you got to so, know is uh, the Bitcoin. Got- that apparently, uh, the creator of Bitcoin, Daryl, what's his name? Satoshi Nakamoto. Who was apparently a, a pseudonym because it was he didn't want anyone to know who he was. Yes. Well, we thought it was a pseudonym. So, we thought it was. Yeah. He apparently created Bitcoin. He is graduated with a physics physics degree from Cal Poly Pomona, and then is Where now Paul living works. in Temple City, <laughs> Where with Paul his Paul lives. <laughs> Where Paul lives. Yeah, I, I hey. live my life there. Yeah. Paul. If Paul weren't eight hours a day, <laughs> if Paul happens to be Japanese. You can just hear it in his voice. Yeah. So uh, it's no wait. He was oh. turning Japanese. I forgot. Uh, oh. But uh, so it's pretty local news right now. That uh, we are one of our neighbors might actually be the creator of Bitcoin, uh, if, if if this just pans out to be true. And apparently they did some pretty in depth research and think this might actually be the guy. In fact, what we heard reports on Twitter that people were uh, staking out his house because the address is in the article, and the article is from Newsweek. By I, just, the way. I have this picture of like these groupies out there, but they're like Bitcoin nerd groupies. I, I don't know. It's, yeah, that's kind of yeah. the worst kind of groupies. To have, <laughs> seriously. If you want to be done by a, a bunch of guys time, walking around with with their phone uh, wallets on, you know, and of course now the uh, banks know where he lives. <laughs> oh, oh, right, they're gonna bomb Devil City. Well, he wasn't very talkative with the interviewer, and I can understand why because this guy has potentially made a lot of international enemies. Yeah, so, no. Yeah. Well, we do. We do have a. Uh, they did get a, a, a quote from him, and this is uh, we we brought in the recording from it. So here it is, right here. I am Iron Man. <laughs> Holy shit, it's Tony totally Stark that defended No, no, wait, he said something else. Iron Man armor, combat ready. Well, he doesn't have to worry about the banks now. <laughs> he just takes them out. <laughs> and there you oh, go. go. There go those f- on his lawn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's see, I got a sensor at 2245. <laughs> Is there a horse running through your garage with like kids on it? Woo-hoo! 
Yeah. 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 Keyboard. <laughs> Paul's uh, Paul's in his garage, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta make sure this timer's still running. Oh yeah. We got some some video, and we'll put it on the web, get the yeah. show notes, so you can see. Yeah. So anyway, uh, and Kale, Paul, Daryl, you guys want to add on to the? Well, what I thought was interesting is that right after the Gavin Andreasen told him that, he... <laughs> yeah, what the hell? You got a fan or something that comes on. <laughs> I can try to edit it out. Don't worry. There was a fan for a second there. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's like, I think think when you're silent, uh, Google starts potting up your volume, and then we hear your fan real loud. Anyway. I don't don't even have a fan on in here. No, no, like the fan on your laptop. It sounds like that kind of fan. Stop the timer real quick. Because we're not all talking right, about it. Right. Oh, really? Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, no, I want to try it. Paul, okay. Paul we can cut this out if we Okay, need. okay. Paul, just, be qu- just be quiet. Uh, I mean, we want to see what um, happens again. Okay. Oh, we can talk. That was weird because it's like he. Baum. Bizarre. And of course it won't I hear that. Now. Like a shh. Well, now we're not hearing it. Yeah. Now we're not hearing it. It was like that. really a loud times, A couple times we've heard this kind of loud fan <laughs> noise. Weird. It sounds like, it sounds like the garage fan. door's opening is, or something like that. <laughs> the garage uh, door opening. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get back. Okay. Back, back, yeah. back. All right. Okay. So what were so you So you're finding it interesting, Kale. Yeah. So I was finding it interesting that after Gavin Andreessen, his last communication with, uh, what's Satoshi? his name? Santoshi. We'll just call him Satoshi from now Satoshi. <laughs> okay. Is that... He said, I'm, I was invited, and I'm going to go speak at CIA headquarters. And then Satoshi cut off all communication with him after that. Mm-hmm. Wow. So this is the cyborg Satoshi that replaced him. <laughs> he yeah, doesn't that replace the real one. Right? Yeah. So, uh, Paul, what, well, you're living pretty close, and I'm living pretty close, too. We should, like, head out there at midnight. And... <laughs> we should make a vigil. Or yeah, do a Sorry vigil. About that, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, there's a vet. Start walking down the street. The sound started again for what, what is reason. that? Is there someone yeah. like chipping wood next door? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, or, or, or wooding, uh, or wooding chips. Limbs. Wooding. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Well, we got way off the topic of Satoshi here. Well, the thing is, I always assumed it was a pseudonym, and this guy would remain well hidden. But then, if the media yeah. finds him, and uh, yeah. now the thing is. If you want to get a little conspiracy here, the, you know there are many men named Satoshi Nakamoto. Crap. Extend. <laughs> extend. Okay. Fine. I guess. We, we, yeah, no, that doesn't even count as extend because we've been, we've going, been off. going off. We're gonna edit this anyway, probably. Yeah. So, just, just, so we'll just do. Let's just do another couple couple minutes. More yeah. Minutes. Talk okay. more about it. Um. So the thing is, there are many people with the name Satoshi Nakamoto. Now this guy happens right. to have the right kind of background in cryptography to fit the bill. However, I know if someone were going around and I had the same background. And then all of a sudden there's this new invention and people are saying, hey, it was invented by Daryl Jors. Now, it might have actually been named in my honor if I'm well known for cryptography. But the other thing is it could have just been a random hit, like someone came up with a name they thought was uncommon. It turns out I have the right background and someone decided to use the pseudonym that's the same as my name. I might just study the (laughs) technology really closely and and claim it's mine. It'd be like, yeah, that was me. So that, Come I mean, and worship that, me. Not that I'm saying that that's what's happening here, but that's a possibility, right? I mean, this guy could just be, yeah. he's decided to study it. Now he wants to take over the role of whether or not he's the guy who invented it. But the way he's, I, I would agree with that if he was being more forthright with talking with the press or something. But then but that was a big red flag that he's not the that's true. right guy, too. So, yeah, well, But you're right, though. That's a Well, I think it's pretty hilarious. Course. It would be like... Hey, I don't want anyone to know it's me. We'll just say right. it's Joey Shamble, but we'll say boy, it's a I pseudonym. Right. <laughs> but from but I read quite a, quite far down into the article, and they really have convinced me pretty much that uh, from everything he says, guy, this yeah. this is probably the guy. Yeah, I'm trying to, I've been big. trying to rack my brain about <laughs> guy, what he could say that would prove it's actually him that he invented that that he wrote the white paper that started. All he, of maybe point. if he had a. Uh, he showed the white paper. Yeah. But anyone can get a copy of it. I mean, it's... No, no. I mean, like, maybe something printed out that yeah. he... he uh... Oh, like... Dude, I got white paper right here, it. man. I didn't think this thing. Oh, my God, it is Paul! Well, no, it probably Paul. is him. <laughs> uh, All right, let's move on to uh, our introduction, or our intro of the topic. Uh, real quick, this is Cyborg. A couple of things we're going to go over today. We're going to talk about what a cyborg Isn't is. Is that a st- Van Damme movie? <laughs> yes. I don't think I've seen and that. And the tagline for Cyborg was, 
a martial artist hunts a killer in a plague-infested <laughs> urban dump of the future. Dude, who took cool. that urban dump? <laughs> <laughs> It's an urban dust. Like, okay. Anyway, so we're gonna talk uh, about cyborgs and the uh, like how, what they are. We're gonna, then we're gonna go into the uh, cyborg, the past, real cyborg science fiction. There goes Paul again. You hear that? No. And it's no. gone. Dude, it's like a UFO. It's the ghost in the <laughs> yeah. All right, let's stop bringing. Yeah, let's stop bringing it up yeah. and just. All right. Must be God. We're gonna talk God. about the past. Uh, we're gonna talk about now what we have today. A chip in a brain that allows us to access all this sort of stuff. Fiction today, uh, animal cyborgs, the future, uh, artificial muscles. Oh, all sorts of fun stuff. It's gonna be great. And then, then we're gonna talk about uh, could you live forever, and then we're gonna conclude. So uh, that's kind of what we're looking for today: is cyborgs. What are they? What can we do to them? And how will they like it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, and how much will we like them? <laughs> Oh, it's a little rough. Uh, lube? Lube, anybody? Lube? No. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, let's start off uh, in a few minutes. But before we get to it, I'm going to pretend like I'm extending because I guess maybe one minute would have been fine for an introduction. <laughs> uh, well, okay, well, let me just say that if I had done my regular science-based pre-ramble, I would have talked about artificial muscle because there's a really inexpensive way to make very strong artificial muscle fibers that are heat sensitive and it's made out of fishing line. You basically bind up a bunch of fishing line and then when you heat it, it'll contract and as it cools, it'll extend and it's per pound about a hundred times stronger than human muscle. Nice. Cool. And it's cheap as hell to make. You can make it yourself. So, cool. Yeah. All right, so let's start off today with what is a cyborg? What's the difference between a cyborg, a bionic person, a robot, an android? Uh, that's a really good question because earlier I was making the voice of Arnold from Terminator, but is Terminator really a cyborg? Uh, I would almost kind of say no, because even though he's called a cyborg, he's a robot with, I don't know, well, no, he had living tissue, right? He has living okay, tissue so on him, so he is. Okay, so that would be a cyborg, okay, because I, I guess that's, well, that's the real definition, right? Okay, well, it was that's just a living is, tissue, like a, it was like an exo skin, it wasn't really like... Tissue. Yeah, but that is a, it's a, he was a cybernetic organism. That's what cyborg stands for. Right, because cyber and, yeah. Cyber both. dying. He's just, he's just. <laughs> there you go. But he's, uh, he would be the reverse like of what we would usually there. consider a cyborg, I would assume. Well, that's it. We would it be did. like an organism, an organism that is enhanced by. Well, that's the question. Is technology, well, it's according, technology with some. According to Wikipedia, it's saying that it's a being that is both organic and mechanical parts. So and yeah, Wikipedia is, is, is the so, says you know. You're so once the skin right, was burned right. off at the end of the movie, he just turned, he turned into a robot. Right. So can we right. Just, um, maybe start out by defining what does make a cyborg because um, I, I have kind of like my own definition. Like I would say that it, of course it's the melding of, of human and machine or, or organism and machine. Uh, but I would say, like, someone who has, like, screws in their leg uh, to bind their bones together. That's My mom I don't had that. I necessarily call that cyborg. And I used to call I, her cyborg, but... I actually have reasoning for it, for and fun. I'll get to that in a minute. Now, someone who has a hip replacement, I'm my starting dad. to call that a cyborg. Oh, my God. My parents are cyborgs. Exactly. You're the, <laughs> you're the prodigy of cyborgs. Huh. Yes. Or progeny, I should say. Um, now, the thing well, is, see, like, that's, something... That's what we're going to talk about in the next... Oh, that's the next section? So, oh, so the question that, is, yeah. what's is a bionic a definition of what? So, what's it is. what's a bionic person? A bionic person would be uh, a bionic person is electronic person enhanced by technology. Right, 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 right. A bionic person is electronics and organic. Uh, but but organics first, enhanced by. They say electrical. electrical you know, it, so it's it's more uh, more uh, electrical. They, there was a whole thing about it. Well, wait, Sorry, I don't have it right. Well, we're here. not doing very good here. Uh, see, I would say that 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 a bionic person is someone who is originally organic and then enhanced by technology. Right. A robot is something that is all technology. Right. And right. an android is a robot. Right. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a type of robot. Yeah. Okay. That's a robot yeah. that's. The, Based to look like a human because of androids. And droids, we don't want their kind in here. They'll have to wait outside. <laughs> we don't serve them. We don't. Kind. We don't serve their kind. We don't take kindly. So yeah. like, in the Wikipedia article, it, it describes that the fictional cyborgs are portrayed as a synthesis <laughs> of organic and synthetic parts, and frequently pose the question of difference between human and machine. 
So I guess it'd be like the Terminator. You wouldn't know the difference between human and machine. Or like, um, what's her name? Six on Battlestar Galactica. Oh, that yeah. Se- six, seven of nine. Oh, so. Seven of nine. Oh, wait, Borg. Caprica. Be Borg. Caprica. That's yeah, what it was. I yeah. got them in here. But Borg would be a perfect example of probably Cyborg because they, that's yeah. exactly. Darth what Vader. Did. Darth Vader. Oh, that's a good one. Would yeah. Darth Vader be cyborg or bionic, though? I think he's cyborg. You go cyborg. He replaced his damaged body with pretty much all his, parts. not all his body, but most of the important parts. When do you go from bionic to cyborg, then? Or are they the same? The thing is, is that a bionic man is a type of cyborg. Oh, he's okay. sexist now. What? Or Don't woman? Be sexist. <laughs> bionic man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good point, though. Uh, yeah. Damn it. All right. Uh, so now let's talk about real cyborgs from the past. Oh. Pacemakers here. This is the next section that we're going to talk about what makes a cyborg. No, oh. we're talking so about. You took me off the subject. Dude, oh. we're talking about. All right. Not going to mention the sound. Not going to mention the sound. <laughs> <laughs> good, good job there, Jay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, well, I'm the host. Well, can I, okay, I'm going to extend then. Okay. All right. Because, go ahead. Um, I wanted to talk about, like, okay, I, I mentioned the screws, not cyborg. Hip replacement, kind of gray area between cyborg and not. That's something like a heart valve. That's machinery that functions, right? And that's kind of where I'm coming from, that I think, like, if you have something passive, like screws or supports in your so body. So you're a passive cyborg. But not necessarily a cyborg. I think like you need active machinery in yourself. Now, a hip replacement has a ball joint in it, so it's actually a machine. That's why I'm saying screws are not a machine. But a ball joint hip replacement is a heart valve I could screw like a machine, though. So, replacement. All those things are machines, right? So, um, no, no, no. Don't agree well, no, that. but no, that's just it. My mom had had screws <laughs> in her ankle because uh, she broke her ankle really dude, bad this, once. This is going to a wrong place. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, my dad had a hip replacement, so you'd say he's more of a cyborg. Yeah, yeah. Than, than he's more mom. of a cyborg because he has actual machinery in mm. him. Machine. Okay, I can see that. I, I see where you're going with that. That makes a lot of sense to me. So, like moving parts. Yeah, moving parts, or uh, you know, something that actually has like a hinge or a ball joint or something like that, because it's that's machine. That would be the basis of cyborg. Yeah, to For, me. Yeah, to you, because I'm. I'm. Saying, I don't think me. so. <laughs> so like, I, I totally. can. I can so what do you stick say, a spoon in my mouth and hold it there. And I'm, I'm a cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the real cyborg. Ever. So, so Kale, what, yeah, do you, what do you say? <laughs> I say. So wait, you saw a male put. I say we let him go. <laughs> no. All right. Wow. Okay. So, uh, real cy- real cyborgs, and that's kind of off of what what we're, we're, we're discussing. We can, it's kind of a continuation of what we're talking. Okay. So, pacemakers. That cyborg? Yes, because it's, it's or because hearing it's, aids. Uh, you would say so. Would you say so? I, I would say so. It might be more bionic because it's electrical impulses. Right, but a bionic, bionic in, is, in my definition, bionic is a part of cyborg. So wait, are you saying that it has to be more than what you're all saying? Not just machinery, but it has to be technological or are you going and that can be anything well see that's the thing is is that because you can also as you can see there do we count wooden legs do we count wooden toes see, in that case my uncle charlie who had no legs wooden whenever he put his legs on was a cyborg our first president was a cyborg wooden teeth baby yeah see there uh-huh. you go but the thing he is, is well. that, um <laughs> that's what i'm saying is is that we can talk about glass eyes and stuff like yeah. that all so, so anything you could say anything artificial. So there's there's the basic uh, idea. Anything artificial that is uh, become a necessary part of your body, not a spoon in your mouth, but maybe a, a metal. Uh, that's implant that, or okay, not. Well, are we that's why I'm saying machinery. I'm not if saying you have artificial organics in you. What about strap on? <laughs> It depends on how long you wear it. Cyber woman. <laughs> or cyber man with two. <laughs> See, I was being sexist. Two. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. No, what I'm, I think that that uh, it has to be Ooh. machinery. That's what okay. I'm saying. If yeah, it's machinery I'm, I'm and organic, terrible. and I don't, I don't necessarily think it has to be in you. Right. Because, no. again, like be if we're talking about wooden and well, tools, it's wood, in there. those are our organics. So does that even qualify you to be a cyborg based yeah, on see, not being I wouldn't a machine, think that, really? I think for what we're talking about here, you could take the definition to loosely mean anything that uh, is added to your body. But for the most part, face it, we're talking about machinery. We're talking yeah. about technology, technology mixed with organic I had these headphones life. grafted to my head. 
so I'd be a cyborg. But let's yeah. say let's say you there did you so you could improve you your hearing. Be. That would be right. if you had. And I think there has to be a level of permanence yeah, I have to, to it. walk around with this recording. No, no, no. I, think there, there has I don't to be. think like the runners, like the the runners that have no legs, but they have those blades, like metal. Yeah. Uh, Running legs? Yeah. Dude, I don't no, think that in the Olympics, I don't think that that's considered cyborgs. I mean, that's just like an attachment to you. So that, it's kind of just like an a more advanced wooden leg, really. Right. I think what we're talking mm-hmm. I think what we're talking about, I think should have two two areas that we're looking at here. It has to Techno- be a permanent attachment. Permanence. It has yeah. to have some form of permanency and it should have technology. Do you right. guys all agree that's pretty much that. where we're going today? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So more more along the lines of that, that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, so because you could take your teeth out, your dentures don't make you a cyborg. Right, exactly. I mean, right. not for what we're talking However, about today. However, if you have a bridge, then... Eh. No. Well, no, but we're talking technology. <laughs> okay. That's why I'm saying it's not just permanency, yeah. it's technology. Yeah. Permanency plus technology okay. equals cyborg So like an artificial jaw from He-Man. Right, trap jaw from He-Man would be a cyborg. There you go. you just have artificial teeth... That's no, no, but cyborg. if you've got the track jaw and it doesn't yeah. move or anything, it's just there. That's not cyborg. You'd have to have like some mechanical like the technical for your uh, right. But even computer controlled, I'd even have to. It's like say. it does a function for you. I almost agree with Daryl that it almost has to have like a hinge. You know? I say it goes beyond that. No, I'm saying move. it has to be a, a, a well. T- that is technology. But I'm saying it has to be more than that. I'm saying it has to be for what we're talking about today. A more no, seriously, technology. okay. You would see some guy going down the street with a big old metal like bear claw of a jaw, and you're like, you're not a cyborg. No, like, I wouldn't. I'd say you're a James me. Bond villain. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> a cyborg James Bond villain. No, but I. That's just it. I'd say that if he, if he was going, I'm not. How are you? And it's moving up and down. Yes, if he's not doing it with his hand. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> anyway, well, well, that was my assumption that if you had that jaw, it would be moving. Well, that's then it, then right, it yeah. for me, the technology's there. Okay, okay. let's move on to uh, where cyborgs first came about, which, of course, is fiction, because uh, it was first thought of before the technology was even really, you know, anywhere near the right. point where it could be made. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe, the man that was used up. I yeah. actually don't remember. That. I'll just give you a yeah. brief thing about that. What it is is that it was a satirical story. Every time I go to talk, <laughs> that's what it is. Every time I go to talk, we have that buzz. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway, so every uh, there was this Edgar Allan Poe wrote this satirical thing about this guy who uh, was supposed to be so perfect and so wonderful, this general. Mm -hmm. And then he sees him in the bedroom getting dressed, and he doesn't have legs, he doesn't have arms, he doesn't have a jaw, he Mm -hmm. doesn't even have have a tongue. And Mm -hmm. so the servant puts him together with all this information, and then... (laughs) Wow. And then when he's together... Distracting. Then he gets up and walks out. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) <laughs> that was the real us. thing. Okay. He punked us. He anyway, <laughs> and so that, by our definition, that really kind of doesn't, uh, he doesn't fit into the our category. But, no, but, that's, but kind that's kind of, of the beginning Where it of originates it. from. And, right. then, and, and then we go into, uh, I, I would imagine there's cyborgs in a lot of uh, uh, Isaac Asimov. I mean, he... He oh, did yeah. robots. He must have done of cyborgs, course, right? Of I can't think of anything off the top yeah. of my head, but he was more into robots. Yeah, he was more of the that. robot guy. But there must have been something there where he did that. And well, then, and then you go into the uh, the Doctor Who Cyberman. Yeah, and then know? and Star Trek. I'm trying to think in the, the original. Cybermen were an actual race of people that wanted it to um, attach more technology to them to improve themselves for self preservation, and it ended up making them complete, basically complete robots. And they got rid of their emotions, got rid of everything. So it was a well, race to actually might happen to us. almost like the singularity. Yeah. Yeah, the kind of um, well, another thing that's very similar to that, uh, and you mentioned Star Trek, the Borg. Yeah, the Borg is a, a yep. really good example because that was the whole point of the Borg is they were meshing technology with organics to right. make the perfect organism. Yeah, right. and that's why one of the reasons they were networked together. And then of course there is uh, the Terminator, who was. Um, well, in the first movie, you think of the Terminator was was he, they put the skin on him so he could travel through time. But you learn as as you get into the the fiction of it, that they actually did it to fool to the, fool the humans. The humans. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, they and did they say did. that in the first movie. Yeah, yeah they, that, did. they did say that in the first they movie did. because the dogs were the ones who knew. But right. there was also the whole thing about um, that was the thing about um, not being able to 
move unorganic things. That was the reason why the Terminator doesn't show up with a like heavy machine gun from the future or right. or a laser pistol. Or right, whatever. because it, it needed to be surrounded yeah, by organics. Right. Exactly. And then when they did the TV show Sarah Connor Chronicles, they did something smart. The Terminator who comes through, he cuts out, open his leg and he's got a gun in there. Ah, see, there oh, you go. Wow, yeah, good see? thinking. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and you know, the uh, in, in Terminator Salvation, which once again, I think was really good, even though there's a lot of people who don't, I think Daryl, you're one of them. And, uh, but... Totally. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, they had the whole idea of the cyborg who thought he was human. And then when they right. opened him up, they find out, you know, he's got all the memories of who someone who was human because they cloned him off of him. But he's basically got parts of a, of, a, of a robot. So that's another way of looking at cyborg as well. I guess the other thing, too, is like one of the reasons why I have trouble um, calling the Terminator robots cyborgs is that I think that um, no. there should be also an interdependency between the organics and the machinery. Mm-hmm. Like, those robots exist perfectly fine once all their organics are gone. Anybody want so, to stand? So I think they're more of a robot, myself. Okay! Uh, uh, yeah, go on. Okay, moving on to... Now, in today's reality, mechanical limbs, powered limbs, we talk about your muscle thing that you brought up. Yep, yep. Because it's actually, that was all science fiction and people saying, wow, wouldn't it be cool if we could do that? Now the technology is getting to the point where we can do that. And it's not just, uh, it's not just, uh, uh, you know, million dollar man stuff. Sure, if you think back to Lee Majors and everything. Six million dollars. Six million dollar man, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 I couldn't afford it with just a million. What are you, crazy? <laughs> <laughs> man. We can only buy a leg that was, for that. That was, that was Ted DiBiase. <laughs> Just think, he would have been six million one thousand five hundred dollars if he'd have come with Google Glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just I got invited to get one. I need fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, or they could have made we'll six one million dollar men, dude. Kale wants to do this uh, nonprofit Kickstarter thing that we can't remember the it, name. So, of. Paul, we're wondering: is your uh, is the door? As loud to you as it is to us. <laughs> Probably. You might need to invest in some WD forty. I need to be actually. There's a can right there. Well, no WD forty <laughs> and some uh, some uh, what's that called? Uh, no, no. Um, chlor chloroform. Chloroform. Yeah. Chloroform. <laughs> that was That's to hear terrible. Both, that was to hear both the sounds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, anyway, so we're talking. Now we know how Joey is going to earn his. $1, well, I was going to talk about the <laughs> yeah. concept of lobsters. Oh yeah. Uh, which is basically Yo. a person with an exoskeleton suit on them. Yeah. But we always like we Ripley already from aliens. Right. But we yeah. Yeah. ignore we, it. But we already kind of counted that out. Right. So well, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Did we count that out? You said that it, it had to be something well, yeah, because- that you can't take off. Yeah. Right, it's non detached. Yeah, that was still a, interesting that was to like, talk about. I mean, this is this is cyborg extended edition. Right, I mean, but they, so if I if I drive a forklift at Home Depot, am I a cyborg? Yeah, While you're in you the go. forklift, yes. Yeah. That's a good point. I, now, now that you bring that up, dude, though, I'm, I'm kind of seriously. I'm kind of, I think gave me you just gave me images thing. of Ripley at the end of Aliens jumping in a forklift at Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, at Home at Depot. Home okay, Depot. well, tell she us about like the, crushes the queen with like a pile well, that of was, lumber. Tell us about the lobster. No, that's what I'm saying. Is just that I kind of like the idea. <laughs> oh that's God. the sound she makes when she's backing up toward the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You die, you piece of. <laughs> Hold on. Wow, she said that word a lot of times. <laughs> wait, wait, just, just stay there. Get away from here, <laughs> you bitch! <laughs> and you bitch! Uh, so, yeah, the, the lobster. Uh, sorry, I'm going to extend this section. By the way, Bishop. more Bishop's an android, right? From what? Aliens. Oh, yeah, Bishop is an android. Oh, wait a second. Bishop. He's a replicant. Android is a robot that looks like a human. Yeah, that's what that's, it was. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, right, gotcha. Yeah. Um, also, there's. Uh, <laughs> Dude, you gotta. I don't know what's going on in something. that garage. <laughs> it's, not even, it's not even in the garage, it's in the kitchen. I, I <laughs> Are you building a freaking cyborg? <laughs> Alright, Paul, we're off topic now. Just play us off with some Super Mario. <laughs> oh, I, haven't, I don't have it. <laughs> oh, no, uh, that's alright. Uh, okay, all right. so, uh, well, no, we're talking about what's really around today. So, the, right. the medical enhancements are amazing because we can attach them now to our brains. Before, we wouldn't, weren't able to actually control them, but now uh, you can. The, the brain uh, interface is being worked out. Um, right. It's interesting how that kind of stuff works because they have to be individualized to each person. 
because uh, it's like when I move my arm a certain way, my brain's not sending the same signal from the same area as anyone else who moves their arm the same way. And you know what? We can just this is the next one, isn't it? Yeah. Now we have a chip in our head that allows us to the internet. Yeah, definitely. That's a good. So segue. so that's kind of what we're talking about now is. So now you can patch into your Segway and drive around just thinking about it. Ooh. Well, well, there's two techno there's two technologies though. You're looking at the guy from the Olympics who had the two legs that were not legs, and then he killed his wife or whatever. But he didn't kill his legs. <laughs> Well, okay, he allegedly. Allegedly, sorry, allegedly. Allegedly. Um, although, actually, you're right. He admitted to shooting her. But, but it was a it mistake. It might have been a mistake. Did he have, like, a leg yeah. gun? Like, like, it was one of those big legs. The one thing I want to get your, anyway, yes. get your guys' point on is that... God, we are so off today. You really are. It's oh, my bad. God. That, um, what about body modification? You know, when people put, like, horns inside that yeah. is attached Curses. permanently inside their heads... Um, or, or uh, see, uh, you know, to me, that's too passive to be cyborg. And right. once again, you know, yeah. you know, these are all like like offshoots of cyborg. Like you could say any type type of body modification would be cyber cyborg. Yeah, like fake right. breasts. Yeah, oh, thank you. Gave me a nice thought. Well, yeah, silicone implants. Let's move on to Niels Harbison, who actually, I think he meets the definition of a cyborg. Okay, okay. so tell us about him. He is a guy who is Bitcoin. was. Oh. <laughs> He was permanently uh, colorblind from birth. He uh, he saw sees only in black and white until he hooked up this uh, this uh, machine they they got for him, which allows him to hear color. Oh wow! So wow. he so he knows what different colors are, and he's a he's an artist, and he uh, uses this thing. It kind of like hangs over his head, sort of like a Google Glass, but. Hmm. And it, it uh, <laughs> what do we do now? Hey, do people with Google Glass do they count as <laughs> suppose you have your Google Glass just like taped to your head? Does that make you a cyborg? <laughs> <laughs> while you're ta why it's taped there, this is while just, this is just gonna be one topic. <laughs> what is a cyborg? Because none yeah. of us can agree on it. <laughs> well, but because all these things are offshoots, you could say they're right. they're offshoots of being a cyborg. Hey, my phone's an Android. Like, but and and Kale, you're saying that this yeah. guy is a cyborg because he can <laughs> nice. hear colors. Well, because it it is attached <laughs> to Dude, his people brain. People on drugs can hear colors. <laughs> <laughs> No, but he has machinery connected to his oh, Yeah, so to his this is brain. a piece of machinery, a piece of electronics that has it's, enhanced his right. biometrics. And so I think he qualifies. Yeah, I, he's got I'd new have to sensory agree. input from a machine. That's that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and that's that's where everything's going to be going. I mean, the idea is that you're going to be able, you're reading the book that uh, that you got me reading now, which is The Future of the Mind yeah. by Michu Kaku. And I know he's going to talk about the idea that moving limbs with your mind. He does. He does. With your brain. This guy is kind of like semi Jordy LaForge because he's taking over a sight impairment with technology. Yeah. Dude, but, that's uh, true. What? Daredevil. Well, no, that's not. No, that's kind of. He, he trained himself to be a bat. <laughs> yeah. That, that, location. Oh, that's much yeah. more real. I'm Daredevil. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what else are they no, using today? No, you're not. I, I there's moving the. <laughs> there's moving, moving uh. limbs, replacing limbs. But what about becoming stronger by enhancing yourself, becoming like superhero-like, being able to make noises that hum <laughs> with your with your innards. Yeah, that that would be something. No, but that would be cool if you could. I, I, like, what if the, the muscle thing you're talking about is that something that that could be attached to a person, or is it just for? Uh, it's artificial? designed mostly for machinery. However, if you had an artificial arm uh, that you want to move with your brain, it could be done with that chip. Because remember, face. on Beyond 2000, when we used to watch that, they had like a suit that they were starting to use for the army for lifting things. It was like yeah. an exoskeleton. Well, uh, yeah. 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 Exoskeleton. For this is they can yeah. basically give they can construct a suit that gives you super right. strength. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. okay, moving on. Let's go sure. to today's science fiction movies. We kind of already went into that, but uh, let's. No, also but bring that's up the a thing is, it's, those are past movies. Oh. We're talking about now, uh, like you know, Robocop movies and, and, like and Spider Man, Iron Man, and iRobot, and the new Robocop. Mm -hmm. All right, Iron Man and, exosuit, not a not a cyborg in my book. Well, that's true, but what about oh, that? But he has the power thing. Uh, that's he right. has the, his heart. So he is no longer a cyborg now, a cyborg. right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I I think he counted yeah, they ruined as a cyborg before. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, you're right. I forgot. Yeah, about because that. it replaces heart. Right. right. Yeah. 
No, it didn't replace it. Well, in the comic book, it replaced it. But it was, it going, but it was it? active machinery that was keeping him alive. Yeah, yeah keeping so, him alive. Same That's idea, true. yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's... Uh, what about Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man? Definitely Cyborg. Yeah. Uh, no doubt yeah, that was that. Especially was because they, he controls all those arms with his brain. I mean, Yeah, a, that totally makes no him a brainer, Cyborg. If you and, know what I mean. and he's cool. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Is he that. cool? He's like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> He's smooth. What I can give you eight hand jobs. Hey, I can uh, attach more uh, than just arms to these wait, things, what those ladies. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I think he maxes out at six, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, I can give you nine jobs of various types. <laughs> Dude, he's like the unemployment agency. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what about uh, transcendence? I well, I don't know. What is that? Well, it's continue. Uh, con- oh, I'm, I'm moving on too far. Let's skip yeah, that you went way too far. No, we're talking about TV shows that have cyborgs. Oh, you're in saying them almost now. human and intelligence are too. I haven't seen. Yeah, either almost one. human. He's like an iRobot. His leg right. is a cybernetic uh, leg. Well, then yeah, wouldn't he be almost a robot? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the robot that's... is almost human. There's okay. a ro- there's an oh, android in okay. there also. This so he's not, also a cyborg. This might not count as current. Oh. He's a robot. You guys. What? But what? there's um. I there's am a robot. Game called Deus Ex. Uh, and it's from 2000. Oh yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Now what I thought was really cool in that game was that um, there are basically like version one cyborgs in the game that you encounter, uh-huh. and they're all like falling apart and going through psychological issues and stuff because they have like robotic implants like right. to replace arms and legs and stuff. I was like that. almost going to include that in here because I I did notice that <laughs> okay. that had cyborgs. So I'm glad it's, you brought it, it up. It was really awesome the way they portrayed it because like basically they're not as good as current cyborgs, mm-hmm. and they're also being left like uh, to antiquity because they're starting to fall apart and people aren't taking the time to repair them and like parts are getting more rare and stuff like that plus they're making sort of psychological uh, issues of like they don't actually feel their other body parts like they're like i don't like i gave up like my arms and my legs to become this powerful military machine right but now i don't feel like a human anymore because i don't have that sense of self like i don't feel where my right things are because that's where the technology was you know i just realized who people like your character in the game your um, nanotechnology enhanced, mm-hmm. and basically, uh, all the like version one cyborgs are like jealous of the people who have the nanotechnology because right. they have like none of the downsides, and they're even more powerful than the series one right. cyborgs. So like, there's this big like rift where like, some of the cyborgs are starting to go psychologically nuts, and they just want to like kill all the people who have the nanotech enhancements because they're jealous. It's hmm. bizarre. <laughs> well, you gotta, I, you gotta remember me. too. Uh, in the there's the that guy in the Teen Titans that is named yeah. Cyborg. He's known as Jax. <laughs> no, he's oh, that's Mortal Kombat. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Oh yeah. What were you saying, Kel? I was saying that my namesake n- nickname Rom. He's totally a cyborg. That's right. True. Uh, right. Are we giving it up or? Are we um, I don't know. I don't have anything else. Give yeah, it up. I have nothing. Okay, moving on. We can move Give on. it for the band. Moving up to going to Animal Cyborgs. And by the way, remember how I was making fun of Daryl at the beginning because he was being really loud? Yeah. Well, we're apparently all being really loud. Yeah. We're looking at Linda, and she's just like, oh you know my what it God. Is. It's because <laughs> we have our things turned down because right. we're because Paul's so loud. But I have the <laughs> biggest excuse because these are isolation headphones. I mean, they really <laughs> cut out the noise. Yeah, All right. seriously. Yeah, we're just talking loud like animals. Hey, let's talk about animal cyborgs. cyborgs. Right on. Animal cyborgs. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, well, they've totally Kale, take us there. Well, they've, they've uh, made moth cyborgs where they've actually put electronics oh, and connected them cyborg. to the moth. Interesting. And also cockroaches where they are real cyborgs because they've connected them up. <laughs> And they actually can sorry, control just, them. You got a bad case of cockroach. I just realized that, that cockroach has the word cock in it, and I never noticed that before. You know, I'm glad we finally brought our fourth grade uh, thinking in. Finally? This. finally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're at, we've graduated third grade. We're in. We're in. We've advanced from Cock third is a grade fourth humor. grade joke. Yeah, it is. So, no, I have heard about, I have heard about the cockroach oh. thing. And yeah, because they actually control it, make it go left right, and right, right. So they're controlling like the it. Milk. The military's yeah. working on that, right? Isn't yeah. is that a military thing? And also, um, they, they've worked on all sorts of 
Uh, they've actually worked on fruit flies, if you yeah. can believe it, and made them fly the way well, they want to. When they get to, like, bigger animals and stuff, I, I would imagine that, like, Boston Dynamics, which makes a lot of uh, DARPA projects, where they're they're doing some human-style robots, but they also have Big Dog, which is, like, a four-legged yeah. kind of animal yeah. for carrying uh, burdens. You know, it's like for going over rough right. terrain, carrying heavy things. Now, it, it has um, programming in it that, you know, you kick it or whatever, it'll balance itself by shoving a leg out or if it's on ice it'll start slipping around but it'll regain its yeah. balance but that's a robot right it's a robot but so, i can see that kind of thing being applied i to wonder would that be considered ethical as well because uh, with insects we're like eh they're insects yeah. Yeah. start getting bigger yeah. though. well okay. the thing is they have made uh, they have advanced up to rats you see like it might they, be an, they've actually been able to control rats right and it might be an ai thing because like okay a rat's not going to do much for you by itself but if you start cybernetically enhancing yeah. it and you have the intelligence of a rat because even though our AI is getting pretty good, we're like not even at the point of simulating a good ant or cockroach at this point. We would be like this. This one didn't work. What do we call him? Pinky. What about this one that got the brain? <laughs> call him the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Snarf. <laughs> well, what about they're also doing it with beetles? Right. Don't let me. <laughs> oh my. As if I do three bad jokes in a row. Uh, where wow. do we start counting from? Oh, I'm going to call. I'm gonna start calling you Daryl here. <laughs> <laughs> nice, burn me by burning Daryl. I like it. <laughs> That's the way we are around here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as we get big, but what if a dog is hurt and we can help it by giving it, you know, like and then send it in the middle of a war zone to distribute ammunition. Bam. No, I just to say give it a leg. To oh, okay. okay, fine. And then I, if you want to put it in the war zone, go ahead. But yeah. well, I think that's where the research will come from. Will be military applications, and then it usually filters down into the more well, everyday use. Yeah, one of the things that they're thinking of of using cyborg insects for is to search in you rubble. Have so much fun editing in this case show. of uh, in case people are trying are oh, trapped so in the loud. rubble. Am I really? No, I'm yes. just going to give up. And you know, Wilma well, was trapped under the rubble one time, like... but Fred came in and rescued her. You're really loud, Paul. <laughs> anyway, that was what a fifth grade doing? joke, I'm by the way. Doing... <laughs> We're advancing so fast. Is this better? I am going to extend because we didn't even get to get to like. No, <laughs> let's not extend that. Okay. Is this better? No, wait, what is it? We were, we're, we're animals. Oh, we're doing stuff. animals. Yeah, well, I think we, we probably got through. Animals. We talked about I think, it. Okay, yeah, we hit most of the animal stuff. Did someone ever do a cybernetic uh, gorilla in fiction, though? In fiction? Why well, don't I don't, don't cybernetic? Yeah, it's in gorilla. Superman. The it's Superman comic had the gorilla guy. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. I have no idea who that is. Cool. Okay, so let's talk about the future. The future. What is being projected? Will people in the future go so opt for amputation to get superhuman abilities? That's an interesting thought. That would be well, like actually, the Cyberman in Doctor Who. Yeah, if you actually are willing to, to give up your body parts because there's something better. Right. Would you? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Would you do that? Kind I of told you, totally you chop your sex balls sex off for cybernetic nuts. Like it was a military <laughs> application. They wanted to make super soldiers that were cybernetic for extra strength and whatever. And yeah, like the soldiers who volunteered for that, it was like a program. They went in, they got these enhanced uh, limbs and everything. So yeah, good question. Would you do that? And what would be the repercussions? Yeah, of it? I think it depends. If I was like seventy and my body was kind of decaying, I'd love to chop off my arm to get a like young one you know yeah. but i don't I, I think if i was in the prime of my life and we're going to talk about this uh you know in the in the yeah, two sections in the prime of my <laughs> life <laughs> where you would replace yourself completely but if it was just for like i mean if i was young i don't know if i'd want to do that i think it depends entirely on where the technology is like are you going to get tactile feedback that's accurate are you going to have the sense of self like this is actually my arm not just something that's disembodied from me um, and uh, you have yeah, to, like Luke's hand. Like I wouldn't you know, want to be one of the first. Uh, a good example with Luke's hand. I wouldn't want to be one of the first guinea pigs to figure all this stuff out because they would probably have to do a lot of studies to figure out what it does to someone. Well, it's it's what we're time. doing now, which is the the people that have yeah. amputations yeah. are being those are the, our experimenters. So and I then think would you yeah. have to be on antibiotics for the rest of your life due to the risk of infection. And yeah, but let's like say you get past so. all that and it's going to be fine. Of course you right. do it. You know, if there's if there's if yeah. it's just an everyday thing where it's like. Nobody keeps their yeah, arms as long as that's, that's another good thing to remember thing. is that we're thinking of ourselves 
as uh, how we're thinking. The people in the future won't probably won't have much of a problem with it. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll it'll be a regular thing. It's just like, like when well, you get taking in, this arm off, yeah. put on another I'll, arm. I'll give and, you one caveat yeah. to what I said. Like as long as it's a, a good solid replacement for having the, a real body, uh, one thing that might make me do it a little earlier is if you uh, say like we have new technology that gives you lots of longevity. And you know the technology for bionics isn't quite there yet, mm. but it's improving mm. all the time. Then you might have it in mind that yeah, you can replace like a damaged limb right now, or go for something enhanced over even if you're okay as you yeah. are. Go for something enhanced that's going to be improved over time. Like you know maybe you could figure well in the next five, ten, twenty years, this stuff's going to be way better than it is right now. You might take an early step into cybernetics uh, with that knowledge of it improving rapidly. What's scary is it, it reminds me of uh, in RoboCop 2 when they have that whole sequence of introducing RoboCop 2 and they show like four different ones. One kills the person next to him. The other one kills themselves and just like destroys yeah. everything. Right. But that's how the technology is going to be is when it first coming out. It's like, okay, we're going to have a, a cybernetic heart for you and you go and get it done and then it's like your chest is like exploding out or, or it'll you know, be like something is going to go wrong. Well, there's two new movies that are coming out that have uh, definitely have cyborgs in them. I, I would think they qualify as Transcendence with Johnny Depp, where he's uploading his mind. I want to extend that. Okay. okay. Where he he has his oh, mind uploaded into a computer, and they talk about the singularity and all that cool <laughs> stuff about, you know, it's coming along. And uh, so I think that since he has his... What you, you're going to be calling your connectome, which is actually what uh, Michio Kaku talks about later in the book, uh, Future of the Mind, where uh, it's like, what makes your mind your mind pattern? Is it just me or does that sound like something from Galoob? That's a connectome. <laughs> that's what they call it. The connectome. Connectome. <laughs> but uh, so since Johnny Depp's connectome is uploaded into a computer, that's his mind. It's it's a mind, but it's into or. Uh, into a machine, then that kind of makes him a cyborg in a way, I would think. Yeah, yeah, sort of. I, I kind of agree. You know, in, in some technical way, even the people in their little pods in the Matrix are somewhat like cyborgs because they have an external brain, sort of. like, Or mm -hmm. at least they have wires hooked into their spinal column and feeding them all the sensory information. So even though they're not actual sensors that's being generated by a computer, that's kind of cyborg because your brain's inputs yeah. are all, like your nervous system right. is kind of... And there's a lot of technology this. that gets yeah. plugged in. Definitely. We are really on the so edge would, of tomorrow. So would like life support be considered <laughs> turning into a cyborg? That's interesting. Ah, The Edge of Tomorrow is the new uh, Tom Cruise movie where he is... It's a little bit of time travel, but... He's actually wearing a a, uh, a, a exoskeleton suit, which mm. is attached to him, which right. he fights in. So it's kind of kind like kind of cyborgish. Yeah. But yeah. Paul brings up a good point. Uh, life support. Now my my the thing about life support like the matrix. is it's not exactly permanent, like we discussed earlier. And then the other thing about it is it's kind. Of, oh crap. It's um. It's, for, it's not embedded. Like if you're on life support, you've got hoses going into you, but they can all be pulled out. Right. So, yeah. All right. Now let's talk about uh, the future. Uh, oh, look! Muscles made from artificial yarns and infused with paraffin wax shown to lift more than a hundred thousand times their weight. That sounds familiar. Is that what you were talking about? That's what no. I was talking about. Kind no, of. no, no. No, he's right. talking about fishing line. Oh, this, this is, is similar, okay. but they're actually Ooh, using carbon fashion. nanotubes. Okay. And they've they've been able to make these that actually. Lift. I guess that's the difference. The one I talked about is really cheap to make, and you can yeah, make it exactly. Home, so. But it's the yeah. same principle, right? It's right. Uh, you know, it's it's piezoelectric, you know, and uh, there it it makes it. They are able to lift one hundred thousand times their own weight, which is a right. lot better than human muscle. Right, eighty-five times. Yeah. Well, the no, fishing line stuff says hundred thousand times. Oh. It generate eighty-five times more mechanical power than oh, natural okay. muscle. muscle. These other ones, they say a hundred times natural muscle. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Cheaper and better. Now, the thing is, though, there, it's important that you said these are piezoelectric, so they can be electrically fired and exactly, manipulated, exactly. which is, simulates 
real muscle because you yeah. get a stimulus message from and, your nervous and system. And the cool thing about this is you could actually like wrap those, wear them as sort of an exoskeleton over your yeah. arms, and then you would get all this extra how, strength. How constrictive. Well, the the thing about the like other ones is they they contract due to heat, so they're not electronically fired. You However, you could have an electronic heating element that causes them to contract. But I, I think response time is going to be an issue there because for them to let go, you have to cool them as well. Mm. So, yeah, they, I could see it as a, a a fiction thing where it's a superhero suit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you all agree. <laughs> Like Iron Man, <laughs> <laughs> but more like a like a suit, not so much like an armor thing. It's right. like I'm gonna put on my Spider-Man suit. It's gonna make me all powerful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I... Well, that's like the, the... <laughs> that's the black Spider-Man suit. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I mean, I was gonna Wait, say I that. Zone, I was right gonna here. say that before Where's the great the voice came up. So, so dude. Oh, uh, wow. I I wouldn't mind having some artificial muscles if you know what I mean. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of extends, <laughs> <laughs> did we just die on this subject? What happened? Well, yeah, sort artificial of artificial muscles. Well, yeah. I... um, they can have a lot of applications for making robots too, um, sure. androids and everything else. They can also be used for machinery because that's in fact the idea behind BattleTech is that the machines had these like nuclear power plants and they had kind of a muscle structure and that's why they made these kind of humanoid up to 100 ton metal tanks that walk around on two legs so when i heard when i first heard about artificial muscle being a reality i'm like well that sounds like battle tech in real life they can how about an artificial scale. vagina made out of artificial muscles wow. i don't think i'd want to have sex with it because ah! it crush your yeah, dick. be really well, strong I'm, I'm just saying it'd be like doing not She-Hulk. too strong just <laughs> realistic <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Paul? That's <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> mm, uh, I guess you could put some artificial muscles around your penis. Besides, it'd be all electronic. Then, like, once it gets wet, it shocks you. And <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> really bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, it's kind of like, did you guys see uh, uh, Real Steel? And the guy kind of, uh, you know, he kind of basically plugged himself into the the uh, the robot boxer and controlled him. Oh, huh. okay, so a robot a... by proxy. I don't hmm. think that makes you a cyborg. No, but controlling that's that's tele robotics. You know what we need to yeah. yeah. You know what we need to do is we, in the show notes we need to put like a some sort of diagram of all the different connections of robots. <laughs> <laughs> like anyway, all right. what? No, I, I was serious. I know. Okay. Where didn't you hear the bell? Oh, there's a bell. Yeah, yeah. the bell. Oh, Let's move on to the future. Okay, there's this really good show called Can You Live Forever where Adam Savage from the Myth... Myth- oh, God, Adam... Sandler. I thought you were going to say Adam Sandler. <laughs> Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be forever? <laughs> where uh, Adam Savage from the Mythbusters oh, okay. um, does a show where he pretends he's the first thousand-year-old man and he's... It's, Adam Savage from now, but it's like a show done a thousand years from now, and he's still alive because of technology. And it's he, like he, he videotaped yeah, the whole thing. and he goes through and explains how it happened. It's really an interesting way of looking at how we might develop through and past singularity. It's kind of like he's Edward from Twilight. No. No, no it's not. Not at all. Not, not, right. no. not as sexy. <laughs> not at all. No. He doesn't glitter in the sunlight? Oh, no. God. Okay. So, we should be thrashed for even bringing that up. Oh, my God. Okay, maybe he's like Highlander then. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll go with McLeod. that. McCloud. McCloud. Right. McCloud! That's the better reference, but it's for the older audience. I was trying to go young, damn it. <laughs> better Father's Day. I don't we're want tra- those people We're trying people to connect our to our audience. 15-year-old girl audience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, maybe you're trying to connect to them, you pervert. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> <me>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. nope, you can't, can you? So, I'm scary, Iron Man. What's really cool <laughs> is I, I really like about yeah. that was at the end where he actually <laughs> comes out of his body, and it's a, he's flying around like a like it's a brain, a brain with with like uh, his nerve endings, and he, but that's the organism that is him. Right. He pulls that's him, Doctor Manhattan. What is so this? he go, didn't you see it? No, I didn't. Oh, see it. Okay. oh it's really good. That's yeah, why I'm, it's really that's awesome. Why I'm riffing on it. So. Oh. Much. And and you go he goes into his old body to kind of check it out because he hasn't been in it for a long time. This is still the Adam Savage thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's it, I remember that part from um the Watchmen. 
his brain where he's just yeah but it was it was it was i it was he was in pain and stuff right here he was just like open up yeah, like, like his brain flies out and goes hey where's my old buddy oh there it is and he and it goes down into like his own body and checks it out it's like it's, wow now i remember why like i didn't it's casper the ghost comes out of his body <laughs> hey, <everybody. laughs> well it's kind of cool because it gives the feeling yeah, of like we're, we're, that's what our our real life is our our yeah. Or, you know, it's we're an organism that's just the yeah, brain. Yeah, you believe in materialism like we do, then that's your being, your, your right. nervous system. And then and then it's he's really able to just you. go from body to body. He's right. kind of like a host that goes into these bodies. Right. And, so it's and where of, he goes oh, in, yeah, like nice. the, the body that he normally goes around in, you can see it's obviously a cyborg. Yeah. They yeah. purposely made him look. He has these, like, <laughs> he has this little wire hanging down a little bit yeah. and stuff. But. Evidently, it makes him really strong and, and durable. I mean, it's a fun show, but it has a good. Uh, it really, it really shows that what um, might happen. I mean, it's it's a fun look at what what could scientifically happen. And because it's Adam Savage with Mythbusters, he uses you know what's scientifically out there as possibilities yeah. that where the where the person going. And then mean, again, you know, we're looking that far in the future. The singularity probably already happened. Yeah, and nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody but nobody no. Knows. But as yeah. as a way to look at it, so that we can see a thousand years in the future, it's it's a really fun watch. Right. And uh, and I do it. I yeah. totally go with the whole thing and want to live that long because it just he goes over to the ideas like, oh, what what if you get bored or you know his like his kids, a lot of his kids that that he's way outlived didn't want to have an extended life. They died. Yeah, that that would be the main bummer is everyone around you would just start croaking. Well, but people had the option to do what he wanted, okay, what right. he did, but they didn't believe it. They wanted to have a natural life, right. which was awesome. very interesting and okay. I think truthful. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right, let's conclude this cybernetic. Did you mean to say cyborg? Cyborg. Cyborg. Ish. Cyborg. <laughs> cyborg. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Uh, this was boring. It was cyborg. 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 I don't think it was boring at all. I think this was one of our. No, more, it, was, it was cool. This is definitely one of our more interesting episodes. Yeah, especially with the Paul noises. Oh great. my God, Paul! Can we just can we just conclude how freaking oh loud God. it is over there? I don't know what's going on. I try to turn down my mic. Is it still loud? It's just every once in a while you start hearing this. <laughs> Not like an ape sound, but it's wait, like... Wait, 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 wait. Is it this? Is it this? Yes. Yeah, that! Yes. That's you <laughs> typing, that's, my, huh? that's me typing. Oh, okay, dude, it's so right. freaking loud. Is it? Anyway, is mystery solved. Mystery solved. There are two mysteries in one day. Can we handle it? We figured out who Satoshi Nakamoto is. <laughs> and what yeah. that's Paul's mystery But well, we still noise. don't know what the freaking fan sound is. And they're both happening is. in Temple City. That's true. Um, okay, so would you want cyborg abilities? My answer is hell yeah. I definitely yes, would. very much so. I think we're a cautious yes on there because it's like the technology has to be good enough to replace your and shit. then what? Well, yeah, you want to abilities? Would you want to have intelligent yeah. enhancement? Would be my first one. I I mean, it would be nice to have legs and arms and all that, but I I need more brain power. So you'd be I like brainiac. Like intelligence preservation to make sure that you don't lose your memory. Well, I think that would be part of it. I want to, I want the whole package for. Yeah. I'd go intelligence first because. Oh, dude, cybernetic package. <laughs> I want. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that's it. I want me a cybernetic package. Oh. oh my God. <laughs> yes, we're doing gay porn. I'm a southern <laughs> guy. <laughs> Oh, wow. Talking to the people upstairs. Uh, special delivery. Yeah. So, um, I, I agree sort of like you. I would like to have uh, off-site, I guess, storage. <laughs> I want So that. I could... I could I want, also you want like, to carbonite your memory. Also like, like people who... Dropbox other for your brain? Ability. Yeah. yeah. I want to have enhanced exactly. abilities Dropbox to be able brain. To, to do things in life because I'm just always so unorganized and confused. I'd I would like have to, a crash plan backup. Of but it would brain. be nice to have be strong yeah. muscles and things like that too, but that wouldn't be my first choice. What if you had to like restore your brain from like some old... You know, floppy disk or something. You, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like Optimus. Eight million yeah. floppy disks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, final question. Would you still be human cyborg if the only thing left of you were your brain pattern? I kind of think so. <laughs> I think that's the ultimate of who you are, I guess. The thing is, if your brain pattern is in, like, silicon and not a uh, neuronal brain, I would argue that you're a robot at that point, even though it's you. It's a robot that's you. Yeah. I kind of think that but in the future... Are you, still, are you still functioning as human? Are you still thinking like a human? Are you, are you now thinking like or, a robot? Are, are, it's yeah. your identity. It's your identity. So you would still... Would, I would say you're still human. And you're, I would say you're a silicon life form. 
Right, but you're still oh. human. Oh! Well, you still have emotion. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did. No, he didn't. Yes, I did. I think if your brain pattern's still, you know, you still have emotion with that, then you're still human. No, I, yeah, I think you're still... That's a... We couldn't even figure out what a cyborg was. Let's not get into what a human is. Yeah, that was a mistake to try to figure out what a cyborg was. Whoa. No, actually, it turned into the whole show more. I I know, that was the But I think it was a a very good uh, discussion. Yeah, a reasoned discussion. I I have to let those girls. Snarf, snarf. (laughs) Did you say snarf? Yeah. Snarf, snarf. All right, play us out, Will. I am from oh, the land of Cybertron. No, wait, no, isn't this the Ding. is this the two minute or the four minutes? I don't, wait. Okay, so we four. got now. This is the two minutes. No, I didn't know there was a two minutes. Oh, dude. Okay, okay. so this is the actual now? ending. All right, actual ending. Two minutes. Got it. Uh, so, goodbye. So, <laughs> and goodbye. Uh, so that was cyborgs and uh, so Paul's crazy movie. sounds and quite fun and stuff. Yeah, dude. So, uh, next week is yes, Paul. Paul, you are up next. What's going on for yes. next week? Uh, next week, I would like to talk a little bit about ethics and morality. What the hell? The stripper? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Well, that's that's the episode. Episode. Morality, the that's porn star? Episode one! Oh my god! That's, that takes us yeah, back. Yes, cinnamon and twist. <laughs> oh. Morality oh, and ethics, huh? I like that. Ethics. That's a good, that's a ethics, deep topic. Morals. Now we're going to argue Ooh, even deep. more about, well, what exactly is morality? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. That'll be a fun episode. Uh, uh, either that or Bitcoin. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not yet. We already kind of did decentralization. No, what we're yeah. gonna do is we're gonna wait to no. do the Bitcoin episode when we interview Satoshi. Yeah, oh that'll, that'll be what it was. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is Joey Shamel. I am Iron Man. Oh my gosh! This <laughs> really did. <laughs> that imposter. No, I was saying that was like the other guy credit. next to me. Never mind. All right. Hey, it's Joe Joe Anderson and Daryl Jores and the um, and that and Paul Harding Jr. And uh, remember, we're incoherent, so, so you don't, don't have, have to. Have to. <laughs> that was terrible. That was really, really bad. <laughs> we need One to more time. That. Remember, we're incoherent, so, so you, you don't, don't have, have to. to. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> 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 we'll see you oh, next man. time. I need to go here bravely. Holy shit. <laughs> Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Soundcheck. Most pathetic sound check ever. Yeah, no kidding. Paul, if you do your uh, sound check, what are you going to be doing? No, no. Today, during the podcast, I'll be playing <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can't see it, but I know exactly where he's at. He just got a mushroom boner. Yep, yep. Come on. Now the two break things, you go in between. That's pretty, that's pretty pathetic. Yeah, I know. I know sounds. exactly where he is. <laughs> oh! Look, he's got fireball! Yeah. That's when you get the star. No, the star's faster. Because he's like, oh, really? <laughs> That's pretty loud. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can turn. We can turn down. Hill, he wants Mountain Hill. You can turn down the headphones. Right now I'm the only one who can hear you now, Paul.
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat the game. They get they can get very white on me. Go for it. Oh yeah, I'm good. Go yeah, I'm feeling good. Smoking all the Buddha. <laughs> Smoking all the Buddha. Smoking all the Buddha. <laughs> Yeah, no, it just makes you realize how ridiculous this game sounds. <laughs> hey, man, it's a classic. That's, oh, that's totally a classic. But who makes the sound burn every time they jump? Only Mario. Well, and all his friends. <laughs> Does Princess Peach make that sound when she jumps? Mario yeah. Alright, my next yeah. seven is dead, dude. That video of the guy who went to the game and got the lowest points ever. Lowest points ever? Yeah, like 500 total in the game. Yeah. yeah. You know if there's like a hardware reset uh, somewhere on the Nexus 7? This mine won't turn on right now. Uh, I don't know. I I've been charging it for a little bit, so I'm not turning on. Fireworks? <laughs> 